This is The Real Hustle. New recruits. The Hustlers are back, and this time they've brought in two new faces to help them with their scams. New recruits Polly and Jazz. They'll join original Hustlers Paul, Jess and Alex. Working together as a team, they'll carry out scams that are more cunning and devious than ever before. On tonight's show, a mark is taken for the ride of his life. That's not what you want to ride in, Aye. Jazz pops his cork. What type of sweater? Yeah. <laughs> and these guys have a terrible day out in the country. The scam does way big time. The marks in this show have no idea they're being hustled. They agreed the footage could be shown so that you can avoid falling for the same scams. The hustlers have invited celebrity friends to help them with their scams. They'll be thrown in at the deep end, no training and no practice, just straight in. Today's celebrity guest hustler is former EastEnders wheeler dealer and king of the jungle, Joe Swash. I don't know what to expect today. Everything's been a little bit secretive. It's early. It's quite far from my house. It's in the middle of nowhere. It's quite beautiful as well, you know, coming from the city. But I don't know what to expect. I'm hoping that it's nothing involving big members of the public, you know, that might attack me or uh, might chase me. Joe is about to get his hustle briefing from a shifty man in a field. Hello. Hello, mate. I'm Joe. Good to meet you. Nice to see you. So this isn't exactly the uh, classic backdrop for a scab, is it? No, it ain't. It's quite, it's quite beautiful, to be fair. It's nice. It's very nice. We're not going to steal cows. No livestock. But they're hard to shift. That's the problem. We're going to hijack something. Hijack something? We're going to hijack. OK, that's exciting. Here's the thing. Uh, we're con artists. We're not going to use shotguns. We're going to get someone to give us the keys. Just to hand the keys over? Just going to hand the keys over. But not only that, we're going to make sure that exactly what we want okay. is what we get. All right, next question is, what is it that we're going to hijack? You want to find out? I'm dying to find out. Go on, I'll show you. Joe's so going to get a taste of the criminal life in... The Hijack. For the first part of the hustle, Joe has been paired with Alex. They've driven to a local shopping precinct in the outskirts of London. Their target is a TV sales and rental shop. That's the place. All right, OK. I'll let you... Uh... Go in first. So I just go in there, yeah? Yeah. Two minutes, I'll be right behind you. Joe is being sent in first, all by himself. Hello, how are you? Um, just the tilly in the front window, is, is that available? This is the mark. We've been let down from uh, another company that was going to give us loads of tellies. Um, we only need them for 24 hours. I've got a list of, um, of the sizes. Maybe, maybe 10, we've got 10 in stock. Yeah, not here, we've got them down our factory. Let me see what's down there. Don't All right, me. thank you. So here's the story. Joe's claiming to work for a film company that's been let down by a supplier. He needs to persuade the mark to hire him yeah. 10 flat screen TVs for a shoot. Your best bet, have you got a little while? Can you? Pop down to Isaac to see our man. No, you know what? We're in such a rush at the moment. We've just got people running around every... Well, the man that deals with it's down in Isaac. OK. Which isn't far. Right. It, I've just come back from there. It took me five minutes. OK. Well... Joe seems to be struggling to persuade the mark. <laughs> Time for Alex to make his entrance. And the fellow that's down at Isaac. Isaac. And how far is that from here? Five minutes. How you five doing? minutes. Hey, how you doing? Did you get one? Oh, what? The one at the front, that's not available. Oh, yeah. The one at the front's not available. Um, Is it not? Not available. And a lot of them here haven't got the boxes. OK, but well, we need... Did you explain... Did my colleague explain to you we're sort of a bit stuck? If he pops down to Isleworth, which right. is where they are, 
Right. Yeah, the guy that deals with film rental is down there. For we this scum to work, them. Alex and Joe need to persuade the Mark to give them TVs from this shop. They don't want to go off to a depot to deal with the press department, who will be much tougher to convince. I've got a van that's coming, well, they're coming here. It's five minutes away in a car. Right, and they, they will so have... So you could go down there, sort it out, when your van gets here, get them to go and clip. Right. And there's no way you can get them here? It's five minutes away now. I know, but I've booked... You know, I can't, if I keep changing, if I keep I changing lorries around... Sorry, you can't help us out? If I keep reorganising... I know, but I've, I, I don't have the authority to reorganise the van. You see what I mean? That's my problem. That's my problem with my boss. What's the name of your company? TRH Films. And have we dealt with you before? I don't think so, no. He's not convinced. But they're about to face a potentially catastrophic problem. Where do I know you from? I don't know. I don't live too far from here. I live about oh, half hour, 40 minutes from here. Right, Judy. Yeah. If the Mark recognises Joe as a TV star, his cover will be blown and the scam will be over. You know what, I've got a lot of friends that live around here. I probably, I probably when I was younger, I used to knock around here. Yeah, he probably chased me off a few times. <laughs> Likely story, but it seems to have worked. Yeah, as soon as I've got payment, they'll be wrapping them up, putting them on the bed. Lovely. Perfect. Perfect. 120 quid each. Lovely. We've okay. got a card. So now they just have to pay 1,200 quid for the day's rental. Right there. The pin number's rejected. Which card have you got there? Who's Alexis Conrad? That's the wrong card. I haven't. I didn't pick up the production card. Picked up. Hang on. Phone them, make sure. Yeah, they're... no, no, I'll phone them. Hang on. Sorry about this. Actually, Joe put the wrong pin in on purpose. These guys have no intention of paying for the TVs. Yeah, Susie, listen, we've got the tellies. Um, Alex pretends to phone yeah. his boss for advice. She can pay you cash before a television steps off the van. I but if we, if we get. If we, I know, I, I appreciate that. Which I, which I, what I would suggest is, if 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 you come with us, no, we're not. With, no, we can't do that. Try to listen. You two guys are coming up the street. I appreciate asking that. Asking for ten televisions. I appreciate that. <laughs> I, I am not going to do anything until I've got paid. I appreciate that. I absolutely appreciate that. But they're not going to leave your sight at all. Well, you will so would come with us. Say that. No, well, then you're going to be not exactly. You are. You're going to be exactly, exactly next to them. This is. Uh, I'm, I'm doing my best here to to, to try and make it yeah, work. Yeah, but I haven't got anyone. Uh, am I going to suddenly magic somebody? Yeah. Who's yeah, who's bringing the tellies? Yeah, really could you? Could you? Can't work. we give him like an extra score? Could you come with us? You. Well, you have to pay me a lot of money. We'll uh, pay. Uh, well, listen, I will. I'll how much pay will it cost you, to have you for the next? I will, well, we'll pay you for the, for the day, and we'll get you a cab back. 200 quid for you. Yeah. Agreed. Nice lunch and cat back. Lovely. Bingo. Right. The right. offer is too good to refuse. Alan, thank you, mate. Nice one. Sweet. Right. Alex and Joe leave behind the drop-off address and head off. The book delivery truck will be turning up shortly. But in the meantime, the marker spotted something out of place in the shop. It's a laptop bag, seemingly left behind by Alex. How careless of him. The Mark phones a contact number on the bag using a hands-free set. That's where I got that's where I got the phone number from. I'll bring it with me. Half an hour later, a truck turns up to pick up all those TVs. So what are the hustlers up to? The TVs are in a genuine delivery truck, operated by a genuine delivery company. And they're being looked after by a very suspicious mark from the TV rental shop. One thing's for sure, he won't let anyone else get their hands on the TVs until he's seen cold, hard cash. At least, that's what he thinks. You didn't see the sign? Are you sure? Do you have glasses? Did you not see that I was coming out? This is so When hustlers go out, they don't bring money, they bring prop bets. 
challenges designed to win or lose a drink. But a proposition bet only has one rule, and that's that the hustler always wins. New boy Jazz is out on the town and he needs another drink. What we've got here is bottle, cork and the 5p piece. What I'm going to do is put the 5p in the bottle, the cork in the top, just clean it so you can <laughs> see it all. What you have to do is get the 5p out before the cork. So 5p out before the cork. 5p out before the cork. It sounds impossible. The challenge is to get the 5p piece out of the bottle before the cork. Can it really be done? There's no way you can get the 5p out without the cork. There is a way. There is a way. There is a way. Not it's not way. a trick bottle. <laughs> Normal bottle. I don't think I could think of smashing the bottle, but that's not okay. No, you can't smash the bottle. <laughs> that might be a healthy safety. So I can't take the cork out. No, because then the cork would be coming out first. Stumped. Yeah. OK, yeah, so you're us. giving up. Stumped. Yeah. If I can do it, you'll buy me a drink, both of you, yeah? Yes. Yes, <laughs> yes. OK, good, good. All right, so what we do is we have to get the cork in first. <laughs> Mind me, thank you. It's a tricky one, but when it works, it's very good. Got it. God, what type of sweat after that? <laughs> <laughs> OK, so now, 5p first before the cork. Now what we have to do to get the cork out. Use this beautiful white silk hanky. <laughs> Put it in. No, I will be very impressed. If we can get this out. <laughs> get out. All right, well, I'll give it a go. Especially with a napkin. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> and the cork comes out. <laughs> Easy when you know how. First, Jazz pushes the cork into the bottle. <laughs> he can then shake out the 5p coin. 5p first before the cork. And that handkerchief wasn't just there to mop his brow. He uses it to snag the cork inside the bottle. A firm tug and pop. One free drink. Make it wine. <laughs> yeah? Perfect. Jess is sitting on her own in a country pub. Not like her to be short of male attention than having to buy her own drinks. Actually, she's here waiting for this guy, the Mark. Clutching a big wedge of money. Jess is going to take him for the test drive. Hi. Hi you in the car? Hello. Hi, I'm Susie. You right, love? Nice to meet you. The Mark has made an appointment to see a classic car that Jess is selling. And being the law-abiding citizen she is, she first makes sure that his licence is in order. Right, I need to check your points. How many you got? Are you not going to fight? Oh, lovely. Well done. Formalities out of the way, it's time to look at the car. There it is, under a rain cover. <laughs> Can you give me an hand to take this off? The 1971 MGB sports car is in excellent nick. Thank you. Just want to shove that in here, yeah, just in the back there. It's open. Finally, the test drive. I took someone on a little drive early and we just literally... Do you know how to get onto the... The Mark's road? chomping at the bit to take this little beauty for a spin. I've only had it since last summer. My boyfriend bought it for me. So I've driven it, you know, bits and bobs, but not a lot. The test drive is over and everything seems to have gone well. So it looks like they've reserved me a little spot or something, doesn't it? Perfect. Right. Wicked. Still worried about the rain, Jess insists right. on putting the canvas cover back on the car. Can you help me with this cover again? Uh -huh. It's because I don't know what the weather's like in Scotland. Yeah. And until it's sold, I just want to make sure it's... it stays perfect.
Finally, they go back inside to discuss the deal. How is that? Is that okay? Right. I've got to go. Here's the keys. I've got all this paperwork for you now. This is the MOT certificate. Uh, this is all the service history. This is like everything you could possibly need to know about the car. That's everything that's happened in the past, all papers. Anything to do with the car is in this folder. This Jess has certainly got all her paperwork in order. The mark can rest assured the car's been well looked after. Just one thing left to do. And that's pay for it. So you've got like a whole year on that. Um, that's a little invoice. Do you, are you going to pay now? Yeah. There goes that wedge of cash. Right. Are you going to count this out in front of me so yeah. I don't have to do it? The Mark's paying £1,800, and at that price, the vintage sports car is an absolute steal. This is good, I don't have to do I hate counting the nails. Let's do with these nails. But are you happy with everything? Have you got any questions? If there's anything you need to know, just give me a ring. It's yours, I'll pop that in there for you. Your keys. OK? I'm going to shoot. Is everything OK, yeah? OK, have a great day, boys. Like I said, any problems, just give me a call, yeah? See you later. He's got the keys and all the paperwork. Of course, he wants to take another look at that beautiful classic car. That's not what you were driving, was it? Aye. You're kidding me on. We do something and drove it. In a matter of minutes, the car has turned from a well-preserved classic into a crappy old rust bucket. So what really happened? There wasn't one car, but two. Both with the same plates. Once the hustlers had found the old banger, they bought an identical car in good nick. It's an MG. It's the same make, yeah? yeah perfect. Oh, brilliant. Back of the net. It was no accident that there were traffic cones in the car park. Like they reserved me a little spot or something, didn't it? They'd been left there to make sure the spaces around the car were kept clear. Perfect. Right. Are you going to count this out in front of me so yeah. I don't have to do it? And Jess wasn't working alone. There were plenty of hustlers at work here today. Paul got into the hustle van, and as soon as the mark was distracted with the paperwork, he pulled the van in front of the window, blocking the view. The lemon was in the car park the whole time. Alex and Jazz just pushed it into place next to the sports car. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. Your keys. And that rain cover meant the mark wasn't able to tell the difference until it was too late. I'm going to shoot. Is everything okay? Yeah. Okay. Have a great day, boys. The two vehicles drove off in perfect synchronisation, making the switch completely invisible from inside the pub. And off they drove with the sports car and the money stopping only to pick Jess up round the back. This is a classic bait and switch scam. The Mark thinks they're buying a good car, but end up driving home a lemon. Now we've made the differences between the two cars immediately obvious, but when the scam happens for real, you may not know that the car you now own is not the one you took for a test drive. It may be unsafe to drive, and you could end up paying with your life. Don't let the seller leave until you've taken full possession of whatever you're buying. And don't carry out the transaction in some random pub in the middle of nowhere. Instead, go to the seller's home or place of business. That way, if there's a problem, you know where to find them. Earlier today, actor Joe Swash helped persuade a TV rental shop
to hire out 10 flat screen TVs for a film shoot. We only need these. We've been let down from a another company that was going to give us those tellies. Um, we only need them for 24 hours. When the card payment failed, they agreed to pay cash on delivery. She can pay you cash before a television steps off the van. The TVs were loaded onto a truck from a genuine delivery firm, booked for a pickup over the phone. The suspicious Mark is now riding along with the TVs to the film location in The Hijack Part 2. They arrive at the driveway to the film location, but it seems to be blocked. Oh my God, what the hell is it? By two cars, two squabbling women, and two yappy little dogs. Did you not see that I was coming out? Uh, what, what, what were you doing there? What were you doing? What were you doing? I you going up there. The rule is, you oh. wait to... Did you know I don't need to be the hard you see that you can? In fact, this whole scene has been staged for the truck's benefit. The hustlers knew exactly when they'd be arriving, thanks to that laptop bag left behind by Alex. It actually contains a smartphone with a tracking app enabled. Paul watched their progress on a laptop and signalled the others as soon as they were arriving. They'll be here soon. The two cars were then pushed into place and a broken headlamp added the finishing touch. So now they're at the right delivery address but can't get up the drive. Luckily, there's a country gent on hand to help the driver with a diversion. Straight up here, first left, and left again. All right, cheers, guys. Sorry about that. Look, it's all right. We've got. As soon as they're out of sight. Warn me about people like you. Yeah, really. Oh, shut up. Jazz legs it to the next part of the scam. He's only got moments to get there and change his clothes. As planned, the driver is now forced to take a back route down a country lane through the middle of fields. This is the back road into the location, but the path through the fields is so narrow, the driver decides to reverse down it. He's faced with a very disturbing sight in his mirrors. The road is blocked by three men in biohazard suits and one latecomer, Jazz, who's made it just in time. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Whoa! The drivers and the TV shop employee get out. All right, stand here, guys. Right here. You didn't see the sign? No sign down there. There's no sign down there. Are you uh, sure? Yeah. There was a sign, conveniently obscured by a fence. You want to stop spraying? These guys don't have any breath equipment. Along with the hustlers is Joe. He's also wearing a mask, so the mark doesn't recognise him. Do you know what foot and mouth is? Yeah. All right, well, you just put your foot right in your mouth here. Come on. You have to clean your shoes and your tyres before we let you out of here. All right, follow me. Clean these tyres, will you? They've got no choice but to follow Paul's order. Step inside. Very sorry, this will take about half an hour. You know what, we're going to have to drive it backwards for you anyway. We're just going to drive it back to here through a tyre no, wash. No, 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 my kit's in there. Hang on, what's What, what kind of kit is in here? What is it? It doesn't matter what it is. Well, it does to me. Though this guy still refuses to let the truck out of his sight. I need you in here, or I'm just going to have to call the police. We'll be here till 2 in the morning. It's up to you. No, I'd rather the police come down. Then fair enough, OK. Are you guys happy with that? I don't want him driving that. Well, he's only going to drive it backwards to there, so he's going to put a tyre wash on the ground. Okay. Is that OK? okay. All right. Paul's talked him round. Now, do you want to wash your own shoes? You want us to do it for you? Well, it's up to you. I can have these washed for you, or you can wash them yourself. You want us to do it? Yeah, you can do it. All right, fair enough. OK, can you drop those in there for me, please? Right, don't get this mixed up. And those as well. Paul leaves with their shoes, pretending to talk to his colleagues on the way. Hey, okay, you want to take these? In fact, it's the signal for Jazz to do a runner and for Alex and Joe to get into the van. Before the marks know what's happened, the hustlers, the van and the 10 TVs are gone.
This is tight. Look. I don't believe it. It's a bit though, isn't it? It's bit tough. Let's get my phone, my wallet. Get on the old pill, man. The scam does, boy, big time. Never. Never. The marks are left standing in a field, shoeless and clueless. I came here in no. the tent when I heard it go and, um, uh, and saw it go and I came yeah, back exactly, to the guys yeah. I said we've been scammed. And I said to you, get your keys, get your keys and lock it. Yeah, I know, yeah. Said, no, 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 they've got to move it anyway. I was suspicious when they came in the shop. I hate that thieves. I just hate thieves, you know. There's no need for them. Um, I just hate thieves. The most stressful moment for me was going into the shop. He didn't seem like the most gullible fella in the world. He wanted to know questions, he wanted to know where we were taking them, what we were taking them for. So I had to kind of think on my feet a little bit. So there's always an element of trust in human beings. So as long as that's there, people are always going to take advantage of that. This scam happened so fast that the marks never get a chance to stop and really think about what's going on. A last minute order from the film crew seems reasonable, and when faced with officials in biohazard suits, most people are going to do what they're told. People in biohazard suits, policemen, council officials in uniform, they're authority figures. They've got a job to do, but it doesn't stop us from challenging them and saying, OK, fine, I see what you're saying, but show me some ID. And if you're uncertain, challenge that ID every single time. Today's celebrity guest hustler is dancer and member of Britain's Got Talent winners Diversity, Ashley Banjo. I have no idea what to expect today. You know, I know I might have to do something that I'm not used to doing or have to act, um, but I have no idea. I'm a, I'm a big fan of the show and I just, yeah, I can't wait to find out. I don't like to lose. I'm quite competitive, you know, I like to be successful whatever I do, so taking someone's money, I just want to, want to do it, get it right, you know, and show, show that I can do this. Ashley has no idea what will be expected of him today. All he's been told is to stand outside this phone box and wait. Sounds like somebody's trying to get hold of him. Hello? Is this Ashley Banjo? It is indeed. Today's scam is going to start the moment you walk out of that telephone screen, OK? Right. Your name, from now on, is going to be Fred Kelly. If you right. look across the street, you see a big yellow building. That's an art gallery. You are the owner of this art gallery. So I want you to hang up, walk across the street, and I'll meet you in the gallery. Bye. Ashley is about to get a briefing from a hustler. Hey, come in. Come in. Welcome to your gallery. I like it. You own this. You are the master of the house in here. Um, so let me tell you what we're going to do. OK, so this is where we're going to take you out of the dancing world and into the art world. Right. And you're going to have to sound like you know what you're talking about. Right, OK. OK, this is a new artist that you're exhibiting today. We're going to try and convince these people that these paintings are worth a lot more than what you're selling them for. OK. All right, let's get ready. <laughs> Can this dancer cut it in the art world? He's about to find out in The Valuation. Helping Ashley to hold his first art exhibition is Jess, playing the role of the gallery assistant. And it's not long before she welcomes her first visitors. Hello, sorry, the buzzer's not working. This is The Mark who's been invited along to an exclusive private viewing. Well, here's a couple of leaflets for you to have a quick read up on. It's, um, it's a new, young, up-and-coming artist called Jay Walker. No one actually knows what the J stands for, though. It's a girl, so we all call it Jay Walker. Would you like some champagne? Yeah, lovely. As you can see, it's, uh, it's modern art. And, um, yeah, feel free to, uh, to have a look around. Time for Ashley to make his entrance. I think that's the owner coming down. 
He's got no clue about the art world, and if the mark realises he's faking it, this scam will be over. Hi guys, how are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, mate. Very Kelly. Yeah, so welcome to Australia. Thank you. Yeah. I want you to have a look around and then tell me if you enjoy the art. Anyone who goes to private gallery viewings must know something about art. Certainly more than Ashley does. Will his bluffing skills hold up under questioning? Yeah, I mean, I could. I mean, it's all down to how open I interpretation, see. how you perceive it. I mean, there's something she was trying to portray with each painting. I mean, you were just looking at New Beginning. You could be talking about how, you know, how bright the painting is. It's a new beginning. You could even go back to the, the whole theory of the Big Bang. It'll be interesting to see what, what you think. You should have a look and uh, let me know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> OK, nice to speak to you guys. Yeah, very nice to meet you. He seems to have got away with it. Ashley leaves the couple to browse, just in time for some more visitors to arrive at the gallery. Hello. Hi. Oh, come in. You? Very good, thank you. Looks very cold out there. Yeah, it's not pleasant. It's Fred right here. Yeah. Hey. Yes, he's here. Oh, yeah. It's the marks. It's Paul, posing as the artist's manager. And the mark is in luck because here's the artist herself, Jay Walker. It's actually Polly. The mark will be seeing her again later, so it essentially doesn't get a good look at her face. See what I think. Seeing the artist in person adds a touch of glamour. Jay needs to make a couple of phone calls. Okay. Do you mind if she uses your phone? Absolutely. Now, do you want to go now? Okay. Right, I'll come and see you. No worries. She leaves manager Paul and gallery owner Ashley to talk business. So they've sent me the proofs today. This is what we're looking at. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. So we've got a full page. Um, it's a great piece. But In this small space, the mark can't help overhearing. There's talk of a Sunday paper supplement featuring the paintings and the artist. You notice that um, this is actually the cover. Mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, Childhood Dreams number six the one that gets the most interest. As you know, once, once the piece uh, comes out, yeah. then we're looking at doubling, tripling the price. The price? Yeah. Oh, oh, I mean, traditionally, that's what happens anyway. So one particular painting is worth 1,550 pounds, but that magazine article should push the price way up. And gallery owner Ashley doesn't want to put the price up too soon. After all, the article isn't out yet. No, to be honest, Rob, I'm going to stop the conversation there because it's up for 15.50, and that's as far as I'm willing to, to go with it, I think. I'll be honest, I think that was the right price yeah. a week ago. Once again, the hustlers make sure the mark can't help overhearing. The price is the price. It's not going to go up anymore at the moment. It's set with what it is, you know. It's, I'm not going to hike the price up due to one article. I mean, 5,000 is a Five, fair price. 5,000? 5,000. 5,000 pounds. It's going to be featured on the cover. You want me Fred, to Fred, Fred. Come on. 5,000 pounds. Yeah, of course. You're talking about times in the price by four. I just don't want anybody buying that. Even, how about if we just take it off the market? No, let's leave it where it is. Let's leave the price where it is. Let's leave the conversation where it is. I mean, I don't want to do this now. I understand. I understand. Yeah. Uh, I'll, uh, Guys, I'm just going to, to speak to Jay for, anyway. for a moment. But um, if any, any questions, Rob represents Jay, so. How you doing? Okay, all right. Ashley goes off, leaving Paul to have a private chat with the mark. This is a piece that actually is getting her the most interest at the moment. Um, it's kind of the thing that sort of broke her out on the art scene. And this Paul is, talks up the star painting. And when you start seeing the different edges of it, and some people see different layers. They see layers by color, uh, they see layers by patterns, but you know, I guarantee this piece is worth 5,000 by Monday morning. He doesn't want to increase the value, which means he probably has an investor in mind to buy it, which is what a gallery owner will do. The gallery owner we just met. Yeah. 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 So he probably just wants to pass it on to an investor because it makes him look great. He'll make more commission on the back end because he gets a commission from its second sale as well. Paul doesn't trust gallery owner Ashley. If the painting's going to go cheap, he'd prefer it to go to an art lover like the Mark. All I want is that piece doesn't sell within that sort of world of people that just buy art and stick it away. We're not interested in the money. As long as somebody buys it, 
who's out with of that sort of private network of people who hide our art. So, will he buy it? If you're interested. And if we say if we buy it. He's not buying a painting he's only just seen. But Paul has another trick up his sleeve. Would you be interested in having that piece valued? If he gets a professional valuation, it might convince him it's a good investment. Look, at, because of this, uh, because of this article, the value of this piece is going to increase three, maybe even four times. Yeah, fair enough. If I said it was going to double your money in a week, that would be a, a vast, vast underestimate. So what's the process then? He's interested. You go to the valuer's uh, office, show him the work of art. He will tell you what he thinks it's worth. So the mark is going to book a professional valuation. Paul helpfully gives him the number of an art company. I'm with Robert to Marks. He will be bringing the painting down with him. Thank you. Bye. Um, I'll cancel something, but that's okay for me. Um, so the appointment is made for later that day. But what are the hustlers up to? A professional art valuer will smell a rat the moment the hustlers walk through the door. Well, all right, and I will see you in a few hours. The Mark heads off with his girlfriend, not knowing he'll be paying for that glass of champagne a hundred times over before the day is out. It's cruel. To be put in this position is quite cruel. When hustlers go out, they don't bring money, they bring prop bets. Challenges designed to win or lose a drink. But a proposition bet only has one rule, and that's that the hustler always wins. New boy Jazz is out on the town, and he knows a hustler never buys his own drinks. Should we get some drinks in? Yeah. Yeah? What we're going to do is we're going to do a little competition for it, yeah, a challenge. If you can do it, then I get you the drinks. If I can do it, you get me the drinks. Yeah? Okay, okay. I'll show yeah. you. Okay, what we have here, beer bottle, 10 pound note, and a coin. What you have to do is, using one finger, you have to get the note from under the coin, and you're only allowed to use one finger. It's impossible. <laughs> it's impossible. Yeah, you give it a try. You might get some free drinks out of it. So to avoid buying Jazz a drink, his new friends need to remove the note from the bottle, leaving the two pound coin in place. But they're only allowed to use one finger. Hey, um, one finger. One finger, one finger only. Not two. Oh, want to try one? You try. As long as you're using one finger, give it a go. Oh. <laughs> oh. Of course. All right, shall I show you? Yeah. OK. On. Ready? One finger, no out, and the coin stays on. Wait. There you go. <laughs> Jazz licks his finger. That's the secret. He then gives the note a quick, sharp tap, which pulls it out and leaves the coin on top. Easy when you know how. Paul has taken new hustler Polly out for a spot of sightseeing. Unfortunately, Paul's sense of direction seems to be on the blink. I think someone told me it's near a church. Neither of them has any clue where they're going. Where is the cathedral then? I have no idea. <laughs> In the twist. Maybe one of these guys can show them the way. Sorry, no. Excuse me. Excuse me. Do you know your way around here? I'm um, looking for Colton Road. Where are we here? We're here. Yeah, that's where you are now. Sorry, again. That's the. There it is. That's Cartmore. There it is. All right. Straight, straight along there. Could you show thank her the way you. a little bit? Because I don't know. I just don't know my way around. All right. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So is it literally long here? Yeah. Problem solved. 
Paul's got somewhere else to be. Of course, these hustlers are never off duty. I'm um, looking for Colton Road. They weren't really lost. They just wanted all eyes on the map to hide this. Paul's hand coming up to grab the Mark's camera hanging around his neck. So what's this? With the gentlest of touches, Paul pushed the release button, twisted his hand and pocketed the Mark's camera lens. This way? Here it is again. Straight along there. Okay. Yeah, okay. Could you show thank the way you. a little bit? Because I don't know, I just don't know my way around. Alright, thank you. Yeah, alright. So is it literally long? Before the theft was discovered, Paul went on his way. And by the time the mark noticed his photographic problem, his lens was long gone. A camera can be worth a lot of money, but a good lens will cost hundreds, even thousands of pounds and it's much easier for pickpockets to lift. But why steal one lens when you can have a whole selection? Sorry, I have no idea, I'm from London. This guy is being very suspicious. So where are we now? We are somewhere. He's even resting his elbow on the lens. No way for Paul to steal it, so he moves on. I don't know, it's very Yeah. yeah. But no such precautions from the hustler's other customers. It's around here ish. Paul is making his move in the open, but none of his actions draw any attention from members of the public. The gallery. Sorry, I really have my first day here, so I have no idea. Excuse me. Does anyone uh, know where the cathedral is? Sorry. Um, I'm not so sure. Could that be Cannon Street? So we're here. No, this is Queen Street, isn't it? Cannon Street's behind us. So yeah. Queen Street. Um, um, Queen Street. Queen Street. Queen Street. How would you? Hello. Yeah, I'm just inside. Hold on. The marks are left with cameras around their necks, but they won't be taking any photos today. Is it not very clear? This map or something? Yeah, it's good. Jordan. Colton Road. So if I go along there and head that way, it's so along there. Yeah? Is that right? Yeah, Lovely. OK, thank you. I didn't realise until I uh, started walking uh, to show her and then I looked down and was all gone. I was talking to this tourist and he just nicked the lane and just plagued it. £700 worth of camera. It's yours. I still owe £600 on it. All right, thanks for your help, though. Cheers. Some hadn't even noticed their lens was gone. This is from his college. It's the first time I've... Mm. Know that went. What are we going to do with the rest of the day? It's lovely. Let's do some um, shopping. I do need a camera for my lens. Perfect. Yeah. This scam works because people hang their cameras around their necks and forget about them. It gives them a false sense of security knowing that the gadget is physically attached to them. But some lenses are much more expensive than the cameras themselves and much easier to steal. Very often when we're out with our cameras, it's the time when we're most relaxed. We're enjoying some free time, we're sightseeing. Often we're in crowded areas. That's when you're most vulnerable. If you feel somebody brushing against you, turn around, see what's happening. And try and remember to keep your camera in front of you. Earlier today, Diversity's Ashley Banjo played the role of a gallery owner selling paintings from a hot new artist. Talking about how bright the painting is, it's a new beginning. You could even go back to the, the whole theory of the Big Bang. The Mark thinks a painting valued at £1,550 will rocket in price because it's about to be featured in a Sunday paper supplement. I've got a full page. You notice that this is actually the cover. He's arranged to take it for a professional valuation. It's later that evening. The Mark and his girlfriend are on their way to an art valuation company. But before they can set foot in the place, they're intercepted by Polly. Hi there, are you here to see Mr Belfridge? Yes. The Mark has already seen her earlier as the artist Jay Walker. 
If he recognises her, the whole scam will be off. It's fully booked here, so we're going to go to the viewing room across the road. It's a nice little hotel. Is that OK? OK. It's yeah. not far. It's just down here. It's really lovely. Before the Mark can get a clear look at her, they head off, running straight into Paul. Oh, yeah. Nice to see you, Jess. Carrying the painting. Sorry. Almost very, very late. But, uh, oh, no, that's OK. Good timing, actually. Yeah. yeah. They cross over the road to a hotel for the meeting. Oh, so I've set it all up, yeah. Polly gets the painting out ready for the valuer. I think we should hear all that this guy has to say. You'll give your valuation based on today's prices. There's just one tiny problem. The valuation appointment was booked using a phone number supplied by Paul. So I can give you the number. I would call them now, if you can. You'd need Charles Belford. The Mark was actually talking to Jess, standing in the next room. He could fit you in at five o'clock. Is that going to be OK? Yeah. She gave him the address of a real art valuation company. Meeting outside that genuine shop front made the whole setup seem legit. Um, it's fully booked here, so we're going to go to the viewing room across the road. It's a nice little hotel. Is that OK? Back in the hotel, here he is, Mr Belfridge. The art expert. Expert in scamming, more like. Like any respectable professional, Alex has a business card. The card looks professional enough. That's because he got it from the real valuation company whilst the mark was walking to the hotel. Ah, a Jay Walker. Yep. Excellent. You familiar is, with Jay's work? I'm yes, saying. this yep. is uh, Childhood's Dreams yep. number six. That's it. Yes. What's fantastic about w what she has is the childlike sort of playfulness that she brings out through the painting. There's different emotions on the different corners because there's a lot of sort of happiness that's gone into this. There's a lot of sort of energy and sort of childlike quality that comes through. Obviously, the splashings are, you know, they give it that movement that you need. I know that what she does sometimes, she lets it dry on one side, she'll let the, the paint dribble. As you can see here, you get these, these traces of paint and here going this way. So, what's that painting really worth? If I was to give you a valuation for what it's worth today, I would say that you should be asking somewhere between three and a half and four for something like this. Now, after you're looking at going higher. You're looking at 20, 25, because the hype will, will bring it up there. The valuation is much higher than the mark imagined. There's even talk of hiring it out for exhibitions, which would make him even more money. If this does a year on tour, then you will be looking at a lot of value going up and up and up. Um, where that value will end? Who's to say? Yeah. Art is a fickle thing. Uh, but at the moment, you should be looking at three and a half to four thousand. Alex has given his appraisal. But has he done enough to persuade the mark this is a fantastic investment? So, uh, would you be thinking on investing, possibly? Yeah, I mean, but, uh, but all things aside, yeah. financially, we're, we're obviously, I wouldn't take for granted for the fact that, yeah, you valued it at three and a half grand mm. or whatever, and yeah, in, possibly in a week it'd be worth a lot more. Mm. We've, got, um, we've got to buy it as if to say, look, it's 1500 The mark seems reluctant to spend £1,550 based purely on what that painting might be worth in the future. Hi. I found Mr Kelly outside. Oh, hi. Oh. Ashley has been listening from outside the door. The talk of the selling price is his pre-arranged cue to come back in for some final persuasion. <laughs> he's going to claim that he's got another buyer lined up, so the mark will have to act fast. I've, I mean, I've got people very interested. I'm sure you do. Just the words out. Well, I think, I think that, you know, I think we all know that she's potentially one of the bright young stars of, exactly. of British modern art. Well, why don't we uh, uh, vacate the room? And, uh, um, yeah, OK. Uh, take a few minutes. The mark is left to wonder whether this really is a good investment. But before any doubt sets in, the hustlers return to seal the deal. Fred and I have had a discussion and sorted a few things out. 
Uh, absolutely, if you wish to buy the piece, you get it at the price as the price is set today. So say for instance, we give you the money, mm -hmm. say you've got, what happens now, if we just go to carry it out here? Or? You should, it would be your painting and it doesn't go back on the wall. He's definitely interested. Can Ashley convince him the whole deal is above board? What would I have to show that it's mine? Well, you would have receipt, you can stop by back at the showroom, pick up anything you wanted from me, any proof. I mean, you know where it is, it's there, so... Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Will the Mark really buy a painting from people he's only just met? That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. But like I said, I mean, as long as there is a receipt and there's proof of purchase, then I think it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I can, I mean, I've got, yeah. I've got a receipt book with me, so... Okay. So then we've got, we've got the cash, so... All right, let's, let's do it then. Good ching. Oh, okay, great. Let's do it. So who am I making the receipt to? Who, what's your full name? And there's the money. Ashley takes more than a grand and a half in cash and writes out a receipt from a company that doesn't exist. Thank you so much. I was very delighted to meet you today. That was uh, extremely lucky for us. The Mark leaves happy that he's got himself a great deal. The painting will be worth thousands as soon as the Sunday supplement comes out. Actually, no, it won't. There is no article, and there is no hot new artist called Jay Walker. All the paintings in the gallery were created by a bunch of kids throwing around cheap paint. Not so much priceless as worthless. We showed the mark footage of his masterpiece being created. Children, it's a complete hoax. I wasn't happy that we got taken to the hotel, but the hotel was nice. And the fact that they'd already had like a picture stand up and it just looked fine to me, really. I didn't, I didn't think anything of it. It's cruel, to be honest. To, to, to be put in this position is quite cruel. It was kind of scary to think that kind of thing, you know, goes on every day. You know, I met those people today. It wasn't like we've been planning this for months or weeks. So I found out about the scam 15 minutes before I met those people. I put on a suit, I put on some glasses, I took my cap off. I came downstairs, I've come back here, you know, an hour later and um, I've got £1,500. This whole setup is designed to separate a mark from his money. A realistic gallery, a trendy artist and an art expert are all added for authenticity. Now you don't have to be an expert to buy art, but you should do your homework. Don't buy a painting by someone you've never heard of from someone you've only just met. And always check out the credentials of anyone claiming to be an expert in the field, because advice from a hustler can end up costing you a lot of money.